Hi everybody, my name is Jessica and this is my channel Plant Hooker. Now today we're going to talk about this big beauty, my peacock plant, or Cathedral Windows, or Geopersia Makoyana, aka Calathea Makoyana, since the Calathea changed their name to Geopersias. Uh, so yes, part of the Calathea family. I've had this guy since a year, a little over a year. Uh, I had actually purchased him from a large grocery chain on the island, Sobeys. And I think it was the one in Sydney. Yeah, the Sydney's Sobeys. And when I first purchased him, he was in a six inch with his roots coming out. And then I had to transfer him to a seven. And it was one of those self-watering plants. And while cleaning it one day, I broke it. So then I had to put him to an eight. And just a month or two ago, his roots started coming out of the eight. And I had to put him in this nine inch pot. Now this nine inch pot I actually got from uh, Dollarama. So it's not a bad pot, plastic, he seems to like it very well. Yeah. Now these plants are native to Brazil, like South America throughout that area. Part in like all Calatheas, they act like prayer plants where during the day their leaves are down and then at night their leaves go up. Yeah. Now these guys are sensitive to like lime and fluoride and chlorine in the water. They don't like that at all. Like some of them you'll notice that they're fine. Like they don't have any of the brown spots. But back when I was watering, before I figured that out, the leaves would get like this. This is one of those old leaves that's left behind. And then I happened to be at an acquaintance of mine who had spring water. I took home a jug, tested it to see how acidic it was, and it was really good water, and then, and my plants just loved it, so it's like, and again, it's like, you don't want to be a pest, so I bought my own filtration system for my plants, and I'll sometimes collect uh, snow or rainwater for them, too, and that's why the leaves have been so much better, like, a tiny little bit of blemishes, but some of these that's from thrift damage. Like there's one here that's really bad because I had a really bad infestation of thrift, but I don't see that leaf anymore. That's why I think he might be gone. Ah, no, here he is. No, no, that's not him. Yeah, I, actually what had happened was when I had the thrift infestation, oh, here's Suicidal Gwen. Uh, I was so sick of it, I just took a bottle of rubbing alcohol and paper towel and I just cleaned everybody with it. So this guy here, because what thrifts do is they'll inject their eggs straight into the leaf. So when the thrifts actually come out, they'll leave like these big huge gaping holes before they start eating their way around it and sucking all the sap out of the leaf. So when I went over this guy with the paper towel and rubbing alcohol, uh, all the leaves that were like super infested just turned yellow wilted and just shriveled up and died uh, Another thing too if you do see yellowing leaves on your calathea, that's a sign of underwatering um, He is about I don't know, uh, a foot tall maybe a foot and a half wide um, and I do know now I'm, I'm having, uh, some of my subscribers are from like India and Asia and they don't use the standard system that I grew up with. So I've been lear trying to remember how to convert everything because I learned the metric system in school, even though I don't really use it. But a foot tall is 30 centimeters and a foot and a half is either 40 or 45, I think. But these guys can get up to as big as almost four feet tall. So 100 
and 20 centimeters. Yeah, and then three and a half feet wide. So, 100 centimeters. Yeah, 100 centimeters wide. If I'm, if my math is wrong, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Uh, so this guy here, even though he's like in a really big pot, I still water him every nine days. These guys love to be moist. So one way to tell when he needs to be watered is uh, the leaves will kind of droop a little bit. But if you're using a moisture meter and you're like checking every day, level four is when to drown them. And because I have a wood stove, that's another reason why I'm watering more towards the nine days. Uh, I do fertilize him. When it comes to fertilizer, uh, I use the all-purpose, Schultz all-purpose. You can use the fertilizer that's strictly for green plants and I'll fertilize him every fourth watering. So every 36 days. Well, it's, it's every fourth watering that I do. Uh, is a high humidity plant. I'm not sure if this guy is just like maybe an anomaly because he's right there. There's a heater there and the wood stove is over there. And he seems to be doing quite fine, but I do miss him every two days. And seems happy, likes it. And I'm misting him with uh, filtered and or bottled or rainwater, just in case, because when you do mist them, in case it like runs down, you don't want it getting into the roots to, because we want to keep these beautiful green leaves. Yeah. Now, ideal temperature for these guys is between 18 and 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, and I think, yeah. Hardiness zone 11A. So in our Cape Breton weather, even during the summertime, he cannot go outside. Like I'm in a, in a zone 5A and like there's plants that were there in a 10A. The only time they can go outside here is July and August. And this guy's in 11A. So no, he cannot go outside, nor would I take the chance just because he's an 11A hardiness zone. So that cannot go outside. Now, when it comes to soil, the type of soil he's in, I believe it's a mixture of cocoa coir and all purpose and extra perlite. Uh, Cause that's what I had at the time, but their preferred soils are cocoa coir and tropical soil. I think there actually might be cocoa coir in here too, because I did have a bunch of that. But it's not straight cocoa coir like theirs. And actually, when I look at it, there might be some orchid bark too. I think about it, maybe. But <laughs> it's a it's a conglomerate of of stuff, and he really likes it. So that's all that matters. Um, when it comes to pests, like I told you about the thrists, but they can also get spider mites and mealybugs. I've dealt with spider mites on other plants, not him, and I've never dealt with mealybugs, period, and I don't want to. Now other common problems with these guys, like brown spots, uh, like even if they don't get like the edging, like you might get like these brown spots. Mm. I can see some, but I don't know if they'd show up on camera. Maybe. But brown spots is another sign. If like they don't do like the crispy edging, brown spots is a sign of uh, poor quality of water. So you probably have like fluoride, lime, uh, chlorine in the water and they, they're just not liking it. Uh, but if you have black spots, that's a bacterial infection. So 
I had black spots once on this guy and like, well, when I googled black spots, it's a bacterial infection. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what kind, whether it really was or not. So I just cut the leaf off as close to the ground as I could and it burned it, just in case. And nothing happened. No other black spots showed up. Well, the other black spots that did show up were thrust. <clears throat> but it was fine. You know, did okay. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. He is, I'd have to say, I don't think he's a first time plant owner plant, uh, especially because of like needing the high humidity and you know, the certain watering conditions or whatnot. But for me, he's been really good. Like this, I lucked out really good with this guy. Like he's been one of my most favorite plants. Uh, and I, he's absolutely gorgeous. And really, the brown crisping edges on some of them doesn't really bother me. It's a calthea. Like, it's so hard to avoid it. And I love it. And the best thing about this guy, he is non-toxic to cats. Gwen will not touch this guy. Never showed interest. Will not look at it. It's like it's not part of her interest. Yeah. So, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down is okay. Everybody has a right to their opinion. But if you really like the video, subscribe. And, as always, live long and plant on.